and now when uh, when we have these basic elements, uh, what we are on structure, schedule, risk analysis, and we we have this general or pretty pretty much concrete idea how our project will look like. Now we try to implement our work, right? So we we go to implementation of, of part of, of our work and normally sometimes it's called changes or implementation implementation windows uh, depending on a, on, a, on a company and how you prepare this specific part of work that needs to be done and uh, did you had something like go no go meetings like like when everyone get aligned uh, from, from your experience what what do you how do you organize uh, work when something now goes to production, when something go, has to be implemented? So thinking on individual work package level, or even mm. if you break it down further, um, I guess in agile terminology, um, uh, you would call it a user story or something like that. What you're looking for is basically a committed date. So mm. uh, committed date is something that you will be working towards and you agree it with the subject matter experts. Now, their agreement and informed decision uh, to, uh, for, for, for agreeing to that is very important because um, besides the fact that there are complexities within that work itself, subject matter experts are us usually span across multiple projects. Mm. So if you're planning something to go live to say that way uh, or be ready for the client in the next uh, six or eight weeks, you would be, um, I, I like to actually ask them specifically, is that date okay? Meaning, do you think that complexity allows it? Um, do you think that your other commitments allow it? Um, if it needs to be, um, if maybe on that specific day, the resource needs to stay longer, uh, or it's a weekend work, uh, you would ask basically, are you available on that weekend? You know, no weddings to go to or something like that. Sure. Um, and also, is your management fine with it? So that you basically get a, get, get a feeling about how probable that date is. Then... So, for example, when we met today, I needed to check with you, are you available on Wednesday 9, uh, 7 p.m. Central European time, right? Because if you if you were not able there, so I, I would be just sitting alone, right? So it's it's the same, same concept. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it, it, it really, you know, if it's not working hours, and in many cases when there's something big uh, happening, it's not working hours. So you need to think about really day-to-day stuff you know is that person available and is you know um ask them on on a very human level you know is there somebody to take care of your kids mm -hmm. now uh it's something it's a it might not sound uh very um how should i say natural at first however that relationship throughout the course of the project oh, usually true. develops and um, you will know you will know what questions you will need to ask the um, I also like to plan the intermediate activities um, on a uh, how should I say weekly basis. Mm -hmm. So um, if you think uh, give it some buffer, more or less. If you think that uh, you, it's achievable in four weeks, give it five weeks or six weeks if your schedule allows that, um, so that you can basically get people give people some uh, some breathing space, some wiggle space. Um, in that sense, uh, it makes it makes uh, total sense to think about the um, communication. Imagine, um, again, building a house. If you know that you want your house to be ready in three months, what you might want to think about is communicating the fact that there will be noise to your neighbors um, or whoever might be might, might be impacted by that, um, or that you would be using certain parts of the road to access that piece of land where you want to build a house, um, so that people are aware of it. You know, and uh, this is what what stakeholders really appreciate. The 
go no go meeting um is something which is basically a readiness meeting yes. what it, what it means is um uh, let's ask ourselves are you re are we ready to go ahead on that specific date um and uh, you should most likely have a checklist in place for that meeting a checklist that will say we have um uh if we take the example of the house um go live date would be somebody moving in i guess so you want a checklist that um the house has been fully built to the what is it called gray stage or something like that then you would uh, you would make sure that water electricity etc is available so you would tick those boxes exactly you would also make sure that uh, one of the tick boxes would be i guess um that people who need to move in if it's not you know about it they have their furniture organized or something like that um you know transport i mean um and you would go through those through those check boxes if you are missing uh some prerequisites one of those check boxes or multiple are not um uh, ticked for whatever reason this is where you need to apply risks and issues management this is where you need to estimate are we postponing this if yes by how much and again uh, a common uh, common mistake or common pitfall is that um, you might want to plan to do it as soon as possible. So, yeah. you know, you, you need two, two weeks and you plan it in two weeks, which is, um, I think, as mentioned, a common pitfall. Again, give yourself buffer because uh, in practice and also statistically, um, there are studies basically showing that if the deadline moves once, the likelihood of moving it again is higher. Right. So what you want to make sure is that if you need two weeks, plan four weeks, because if the planning had worked initially, um, you would have been on time for the first deadline. So there might be unknown unknowns. Hence, give, your, give yourself buffer to, to do that, to that's, discover that's, that. That's excellent. That's excellent point. Uh, again, many, many, many great points there. And um, you mentioned several times a checklist um, um, that that you go through this meeting, and maybe it's a good recommendation also to to develop this checklist actually with your team too, right? So yeah, uh, actually <laughs> yeah. to to create to create this checklist as a part, maybe even if of of your scope that is actually being um, able to that you can reuse it uh, for every every change, so that you are not missing things. Um, and uh, from my own experience is that if it's written and if it's shared on a screen, normally there is someone that is remembering something addition, that, that we are thinking about something in addition. If there is nothing on a screen and if you're just talking around, uh, generally things are being missed. Right? So it's a... Yeah, it's true. It's, it's one of those things, um, I guess, in the working remotely or working in person, such meetings like... Uh, kickoff meeting, um, mm -hmm. workshop meetings, uh, go no go meetings, um, uh, or for that matter, usually celebration meetings or something like that at the end, lessons learned or something like that, is what is what makes sense to do either in person, preferably, or if not possible in person, also uh, screen sharing with um, making sure that con there's content constant interaction. Uh, uh, of the participants so that, you know, everybody's on board with what's being discussed because, as we all know, uh, throughout each meeting, people receive a number of emails, people are pinging them, and they tend to get distracted. Mm -hmm.